Hello residents of Eastall Meadow. I'm Greg Thompson. Uh, I'm here. We're here in LCAT studio. Uh, today is Monday, March 2nd. I'm joined by my, by my friend today. Deirdre Mayu. And we just wanted to give you some insight into the proposed charter that's being presented to us and let you know that we are in favor of this charter. We are also elected officials in town. We both sit on the school committee and we have had a couple of conversations about what's been presented to us as residents of the town. And we just want to give you our side of this and some of our information about it. So Deirdre and I both sit on the school committee existing. I've been on now for seven years and actually formerly on the uh, Board of Library Trustees. Uh, Deirdre is now four years, four on, years school on, on the school committee. Some good hard work on that committee. So we thought as elected officials, we might just come forward. Um, there have been others that have come forward and then certainly uh, different perspectives are valuable. I just want to remind people that we all have different perspectives. So as we're considering the charter, um, you know, think about others' perspectives, where they're coming from, why they may be in favor of certain sections, why they may not be in favor of certain sections. What I do want to remind people of is all uh, the work that the Charter Commission has done. Yep. Um, the fact that the town did vote originally to have the Charter Commission uh, and even going back further, the 1,500 signatures that we require to, to create the Charter Commission. But in doing that, I believe that the Commission has put forth the time that the town has asked them to do and have come up with an end product, the, the Home Rule Charter, that seems to make sense, at least to me. And I'll just speak for myself uh, originally when, when we talked about or got the process underway. I even wrote a letter to the uh, Charter Commission mm -hmm. um, stating that I was leaning towards a mayoral form of government as the executive versus um, what they've come forth with. I thought perhaps we could go over what we have now versus what they're proposing mm -hmm. real quick. Um, as many of you know, currently we have the three member board of selectmen, uh, the executive branch of the town of East Salm Meadow, um, and then we have the town meeting, which is the legislative branch of the town. Mm -hmm. What the proposed charter would do is hire a, a town manager, manager. Um, and they would be the uh, executive of the town on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is an individual that has uh, qualifications in terms of education, experience in, experience in municipalities. Mm -hmm. And then we would have a seven-member council that would be elected by the people of East Long Meadow on a rotating annual basis uh, that would each serve three-year terms. And they would be the legislative branch uh, of the town, creating policies, um, or ha having uh, input on budget development process, um, planning and zone, zoning regulations. Right. So they would be the informed citizens of the town and we would hire an executive. I look at it kind of, if you were to run an organization that has an annual operating budget of $56 million, who would you want in charge? Would you want to say, um, I would like to hire someone at a good living wage right. that has education and experience that will be here 40 hours a week, at least 50, 60 probably, but certainly be there when the departments are open or the, mm -hmm. the company is open, however you want to look at it. Or would you like to have three people that chances are have never met before and their only qualification is that they had uh, enough signatures and ran on the ballot and they were elected. Now, I don't want to diminish the, the amount of time that people commit to this town. Right. Uh, the Board of Selectmen is a, um, I think we ask too much of the Board of Selectmen as a town of East right. Meadow. We're much too large an organization in right. my favor. And so we set them up for failure. The, the Any elected official, any right. official that has offered to uh, be appointed, elected, however they offer to serve, I think that's exactly what we need. So I, I'm, not, I'm not taking away from that. I just personally think that the system we have now no longer uh, is set up for success, both on the executive side, right. but also on the legislative side. And I do want to add to you that I've been in town for about 10 years, and out of those 10 years, you have to realize where I'm coming from, I have yet to see a fully functioning board of selectmen. So for me, I feel like we need to have some sort of change because we have some inefficiencies in the way the town is being run. And then having some more insight into the whole budget of our town on both the town end and the school end, I just, you know, I just feel that we're by having a town manager, we would have one person in charge all the time to help oversee things. And then we would have our council, which is going to sort of represent our town to help balance that out and give some guidance on how we to go. And I think in long term, we would be better off with having that one town manager who over, you know, can oversee everything. And with our town council that guides them, I think in the long term, I think it would do better for our town budget because things aren't just going in all different directions that we're a little more structured and we're not so disjointed. And I think two points to that, 
Uh, first, the fact that we currently have multiple executive boards with over 25 uh, elected officials every year, are you perhaps more apt to know what a seven member board is? Because there's now we only, as, as a viewing public, we only need to um, watch after uh, one board and, and their decisions. Mm -hmm. And then the second point, and I know we've talked about it before though, uh, this form of, form of government, and it was pointed out to me early on by one of the charter members, uh, is much like the school committee superintendent relationship. Right. So as a school committee, um, we have policy development. We, we are certainly um, a part of the uh, budget development. Um, and we're the checks and balances for the superintendent who right. runs the, the organization. He's an, he, he or she is an educated, experienced individual. And the buck stops with them. So we, right. we set um, short-term goals, long-term goals, and uh, benchmarks along the way, and it's, it's that person's job as the executive or as the manager or as the superintendent of schools to make the, the, those things happen. Currently, right. we have very little uh, direction on an annual basis. Uh, right. If you look at our executive board, we get one new member every year out of three. So how we could have any continuity of long-term goals, Correct. Um, accountability, uh, it's very difficult to imagine that that actually works anymore. So right. again, it goes back to the to why this might work better. I think so also. Um, and then we can talk about town meeting. Yeah, yep. Just statistic-wise with 11,000 registered voters. Right. Uh, you know, sometimes we have a trouble getting a quorum. You know, we might get 125, 150 people, right. 150 people. Um, and, and, it, and it's fine and I understand that people want the opportunity to come and speak and be part of democracy in a small town. It's a very small town right. atmosphere. But uh, to, to say that 125 people showing up is truly representative, right. I mean, it's, again, people give their time, they come to town meeting, that's the process we have. We've been to every town meeting since we've been elected yes. to school, school committee. Even before. Um, and, and before. And so, you know, we get it. I, I used to like town meeting more than I do now. now uh, you know, things that are coming are basically going to pass. You'll get people that stand up and say their piece, and, and certainly that's, that's valuable discussion. But it's not often that, you know, things are swayed away from the decision that's on the table. Right. Um, I think it would be an improvement or a more efficient process for decision making by having our council and us still being able to provide an impact or even an impression or even some pressure on that council to help them vote or sway their vote in the right way. Right, and, and the note to that is that every meeting, according to the charter, there is a, an opportunity for public input. So as now, if you were to go to a board of selectmen meeting and ask to speak, they, they don't have to acknowledge you. They certainly can, they have that ability, but within right. the charter, yeah, every meeting you could show up every other week mm -hmm. and say your piece. And my thing always has been that if you have a logical argument Logic, in theory, I know it doesn't always, but logic should prevail, especially as you get a larger board. So now we have a two-member board with, or a three-member board with a two-member uh, majority. We double the threshold for the majority if you right. go to seven members. I know we've moved it over to legislative, but in theory, they're, they're more up-to-date and more in tune with what the executive is doing, and so now we have that clear oversight, right. whereas now... Um, it's not as efficient, Correct. I guess, is the, is the point. Right. And then the other option, too, is if there is something so important that it goes to a ballot, again, statistically speaking, we have had greater ballot turnout right. than we've had town meeting turnout. So, again, we're also making, looking at what has been the process that's been working well for our town. Um, this is going back to the Charter Commission, that they were set with finding how can we make our town government more efficient. And if we're seeing numbers decrease at town meeting, but when they look at ballot numbers, they're seeing we get a, a greater turnout for ballot. So if a vote has to go to ballot, we're using the most efficient and effective method we can to get an idea of what is the town thinking. Right, and, and we have that option with the new charter. Currently, Correct. we don't have the op option to petition, A, for reconsideration. For So with 100 votes, I, I believe it's 100 votes, um, you can, requests, it's 100 signatures, I'm sorry, on a petition, you can request that the council reconsider 
a vote or a decision that they made. Right. With 500 signatures, you can request a, um, a referendum, mm -hmm. which would bring it to a ballot. So any decision that the, uh, the, the council might make, there are some exceptions in terms of hiring That's and right. other things, um, but with 500 signatures, right. you could get it to referendum, to town vote. So you mm -hmm. have your chance to speak there, much probably right. more than you do at town meeting, because right. now we're focusing on one decision, we have some t time to talk about, and it's that big of a, uh, an issue that it's come to 500 people that said they put the name on it. The other one is the recall provision right. also, which is a, three, a 500 um, right. signature petition, which we don't currently have, which is probably something that, right. that, that right. would be helpful. And 500 is not that high of a number. If it's that important of an issue, right. people will be wanting to sign papers to say, we need this to change. Right. And that's why, again, I like this charter is that this is something being brought to us that still has opportunity to be changed. We have an opportunity right now to change the system that we have right. that gives us the chance to improve upon it, try something new, and tweak it in ways that may even be more effective. And within the charter, we're going to do that automatically. So if we vote the charter in, in four years, we'll go through that whole renewal process, much like the process we just went through for the charter. Right. And then every 10 years after that on the zero, We'll do a full charter review or how much of a charter review the, 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 the town desires at the time. And so that's automatically in place. Whereas this one needed 1,500 signatures to get on the ballot to then elect right. a whole council. So this will actually um, be a much more uh, uh, malleable or, or living document because we can change it more often versus the way we change it now. And living document is what I like about it. And the fact that right now we don't really have much opportunity to make changes we have an opportunity to vote in something that will allow us to make changes as we see fit. So if things come up, we can start to make those changes right. to affect us in a positive way. And there was something else I was going to say, and now I forgot about it. Um, so, so if there's anything you want to add. Yeah, no, I, I, I pulled out a, a, a quote from Albert Einstein, and Albert Einstein's definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So I think what we have now clearly isn't working. It hasn't worked for a dozen years or so, or so slowly been deteriorating. So here is our one opportunity to try something else. It's been uh, discussed, it's been vetted, it's been researched. It's a different form of government. Change is difficult for people. Right. But if people just perhaps want to read the document, it's all over town, you can certainly get it online. Um, Deirdre and I don't claim to know everything. We, I don't know everything. No. Uh, you're, you no, know this more is why we I have do. the conversations. But we just wanted an opportunity to get a chance to say that we are in favor of, of the town charter. And, and I'll be voting yes on the charter. Voting um, yes. And I'm talking to other people trying to, to just tell what we've told today and, uh, and hope that, that we can try a new system and a better system. Will it be perfect? We've talked about this before. There, if there were a perfect, perfect form of government, we would all just have it and we could all go home. But this is something different. It's more efficient. It's more more organized right. and probably more accountable to the voters. And that's now I remember what I was going to say that it gives us the ability to be proactive on things as opposed to just reactive of just waiting till things are happening that we can start trying to make changes. Here is our opportunity to make change and we can actually put out plans and make changes and see some positive growth in the town right. as we're moving into the future we have to think what are we leaving for the next generation of people exactly so, so april 12th april 12th is the election date. and again take your time read through it ask as many people that you can any questions uh that you have we're available both of our emails are on the website the town website as we said we're both school committee members uh we have a town email but certainly we have personal emails we get to folks and phone numbers or however and again i don't know it all you know deirdre you know a lot. So, I know a lot. But um, this is how we feel. This and we feel. Uh, go April Spartans. April 12th, we're <laughs> going to go out and vote and vote yes for the charter change. Thank you for listening. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Deirdre. Yeah, thanks, Greg.